Hi, we're here with Robert Marchese, art director on uh, Hitman Absolution with IO Interactive. Uh, tell us about what you're seeing uh, at E3 today. What are we showing off? Well, this year at E3 we are showing lots of stuff compared to the last year. Last year we had one piece of code, which was the Run For Your Life code, but this year we're actually trying to make it even bigger and better. So we have on the floor the King of Chinatown, which is a playable demo for them. And it's the first time the public has hands-on and we can get some feedback from what people are doing with the game. And uh, then we have a, a longer demo, which is uh, showcasing our Kill Sandbox gameplay in uh, the City of Hope, and it's called the Streets of Hope, where uh, Agent 47 has uh, five targets and uh, one extra person that he has to kidnap on top of that. Okay. And, and you can play that however you want, right? You can be kind of brash and go all out attacking or stealthy. You can definitely play this game and all the other levels that we have shown so far in any way you want. That's really important for the franchise and what it is all about. It's about choice and what the player uh, uh, wants to do with all the tools at his disposal. Uh, one thing that is really important to understand is uh, that uh, there is no forced combat in Hitman Absolution. Uh, with the exception of the targets, which are of course your uh, yeah. main objective. That, that's, you have to kill them, you right? You have to kill them. Uh, then there is no forced combat. We have showcased uh, in the trailers some more action-oriented uh, uh, storylines, but it's, uh, it's just a way to present the more action-oriented side of the game. Uh, those levels that have been showed in the trailers, they can be played in a very stealthy manner where no one gets actually touched by 47 along the way. And uh, this is really important because it ties into our rating system. Uh, we have the silent assessing rating and that is uh, a staple element of the series and um, we wanted to we cherish it and want to keep it in the series and uh, this time around to actually achieve this rating you have to be not only not seen by anyone, but also have to remove any evidence of your whereabouts on the level prior. Okay, that's cool. So we've seen a little bit of uh, Chinatown on the show floor. It's got a very sort of distinctive visual style, uh, some purples going on there and all sorts. Can you explain uh, how you came to that kind of style, any sort of inspiration you had? Well, the inspiration for King of Chinatown was... Uh, it's a bit of a homage to the older levels from, uh, from the other entries, but it's, what really makes that level stand out is the lighting and the mood that is present there. We have, uh, this is one of the early uh, kill sandbox levels where 47 has to take out one target, the king of Chinatown. And he has several options and uh, uh, tools to do this. Uh, you are also present in a big crowd, and the crowd is a huge element to define uh, the mood of a level because that is definitely just not only a gameplay element but also a very strong visual element. And, uh, and then we have the lighting. This, this level takes place early in the morning, so uh, the, the sun is just about rising, and uh, this, uh, this uh, dawn effect has a re can, can let us uh, with the new engine, the Glacier 2 engine, uh, gives us the possibility to throw some really beautiful red, warm light on this bluish. Uh, neighborhood that is uh, waking up. Yeah. You talked a little bit about Glacier 2 there. Um, obviously, that's the, the big new engine that Absolution's running on. We've yes. seen a little bit of it uh, with Sniper Challenge as well. Uh, what sort of tools does that give you then as an art director? How, how, why is this the engine to have? Well, it is the engine to have because it was made with Absolution in mind, and Absolution was made. Uh, to, 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 uh, it, was, uh, it was made with this engine. It's, it's, the two things complement each other. Uh, when we set out to produce this game, we, needed, we realized that we needed uh, new tools because this was wanted to be the most ambitious game in the series yet. And uh, that is what Glacier gives us. It, uh, from a production point of view, it's an incredibly flexible engine that allows uh, level designers and graphic artists to have a much faster turnaround uh, to prototype faster and uh, get uh, uh, results that can be tested and give uh, feedback to, uh, to each other in, in a meaningful way. Uh, and also it's a, it's a much more powerful tool from, uh, from programming and uh, uh, for instance just lighting point of view that it, has, uh, it allows us to have dynamic lights and uh, it's, uh, it's just in general a more, more, much more flexible tool. Right, so like it gives you uh, basically more time to, you know, get this game polished, yes. looking the way you want. Uh, obviously, we've got the game coming out in November. Uh, what are you doing with uh, the few months you've got left? Uh, with the few months we have got left, uh, we are actually 
uh, extremely busy because uh, we are uh, reaching our uh, you know, we are we have our we're reaching our beta uh, deadline. We have shown you on, on E3 is our pre-beta, which means that uh, it's uh, finished, but it needs still some polish. And the polish is really what will make this game shine in the end. And uh, the polish can be anything from uh, graphical elements to bugs or to some uh, minor uh, gameplay tweaks. And uh, uh, God is in the details, and uh, people are really going uh, crazy with trying to tweak it and make it as good as possible with the time they have left. And I, I know you get this question a lot, and we have touched on it uh, a little bit earlier. Um, obviously, there's been a lot of trailers, uh, a lot of action scenes, and some of the some of the Hitman fans, understandably, like the the ones from back in the the original days, a little bit concerned that it's not the Hitman they know and love. Obviously, I know that's that's different, and so do you. So, could you maybe talk about uh, what sort of values it retains from the original series? Why are they going to love this game? Well, I. I I'm pretty sure that the original fans from the series, they're going to love these games. And I think that when with the code we're showing on E3, now we're putting those uh, doubts to rest because it's, uh, we have two different kill box, uh, sorry, uh, kill sandbox uh, levels that we're showing for the people here. And they are classic hitmen like we know them. You have one target and different ways to take him down, ranging from poisoning him to blowing a car up to just plain shooting him. And uh, it goes, the spectrum of stealth goes from not having been there at all to actually just going and shooting everyone in a crowd and uh, calling SWATs on you. Um, the trailers that we have shown so far have all taken uh, uh, inspiration from levels that 47 will uh, uh, visit during Absolution. We have chosen to show a more uh, uh, action oriented approach because. Uh, it, for, for story purpose, it just works better in, in, in a trailer like that. But we do hint also at all the elements of the stealth side of the gameplay, like uh, the, a bit of sneaking and a bit of uh, uh, garroting and uh, poisoning of people. And what we have shown in the trailers is, uh, is maybe a bit more action-oriented, but that is also because of a storytelling uh, device. That just, it just works better in that format. But uh, when we are uh, showing the gameplay and the, the game itself, uh, I do hope that people realize that it can be played in any other w way that they want. I mean, what we've done so far is first, we presented Glacier 2 in a very cinematic yeah. approach with yeah. last E3. Then we presented the uh, Orphanage code, where we played the level twice, the same level, but in completely different approaches. And this was to prove that the AI was flexible enough to cater to different play styles. And we also wanted to expand on the arsenal 47 has that we have uh, presented so far and uh, and this basically it brings us to E3 now where we have thought to the people, we shown to the people what 47 can do and uh, now we're giving him a, a target and now it's up to uh, the players to do what they want with it and this is classic Hitman as they know it. Yeah and it's all about choice so they can do it exactly how they want um, even you know the, the instinct kind of mode that he has you don't have to use that that's just player choice so if you want to go and turn everything off that's that's fine you can do that and just be stealthy right? That, oh, that yeah you, you we have the option and it ties into the difficulty levels that will uh, be unlocked later when yeah. it's 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 um, difficulty is very scalable in this game and uh, it can affect on some of the minor settings, just how alert the guards are and how many patrols are present on a level. But later on, uh, in, the, in the more hard, difficult settings, you can actually start turning off some of the elements that actually are an aid for the player doing the normal levels. Yeah, and, uh, and this is you know, definitely a, a game for the fans. So uh, their feedback, I, I presume it's being used a lot in development in the, in the whole process of deciding what exactly you want to do. I mean, we take, uh, we take feedback from all fronts very seriously. And uh, we are play testing the game all the time. And uh, we really wanted to make uh, the game play better. And uh, I know there is a bit of concern about when you use the word accessibility, but that can be used in many different ways. Just for instance, tweaking the controller layout or uh, the settings and the way for the seven fields when the player is in control of him uh, is, uh, is also something that will aid accessibility. I personally feel that uh, the, our cover system is one of the best for uh, in, the, in this current generation of third person 
uh, titles. Uh, it's incredibly responsive and the way 47 can roll from cover to cover around them is, uh, is incredibly... Uh, um, it, 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 it gives you a very clear feedback on what you're doing and you don't feel like the, con the game isn't controlling your character but it's you that's controlling him and that is also part of uh, uh, accessibility and uh, we do tweak those values also by using user research and figuring out okay what do they feel is it is it too is he too cumbersome is it too clumsy too fast and uh, we always try all the time to uh, take in as much feedback as possible to make the game as good as we possibly can in the time we have Brilliant, glad to hear it. So we've got a few questions uh, from from online, just a few. Uh, so on Twitter, someone uh, asked, uh, "What sort of weapon customization can we expect? Is there anything you can reveal about that and the weapons available?" I can't go too much into detail, but the weapon customization is already hinted in the sniper challenge that we are releasing as a pre-order incentive for Absolution, where uh, uh, when completing certain objectives you will actually be able to unlock uh, uh, better upgrades for the weapons you have, like, for instance, bigger magazine or uh, uh, less recoil or something like that. Okay. And the last trailer we saw, uh, Agent 47 had a plaster on, the, on his barcode. What, what's going on there? I mean, we can take some guesses, right? Well, it's, uh, I think some things are, should be left uh, for the players to discover when they are uh, uh, playing the game for themselves. But uh, one thing I think is important is that for the first time, we wanted to give a bit more of a personal journey to 47, and uh, some surprises will, uh, will, I think, should be better. Yeah. We, we don't want to reveal too much. You've got to, got to enjoy the game. Um, so, uh, final question, we'll just leave with, uh, what's the, the most enjoyable thing uh, for you personally, having worked on Absolution, whether it's you know just the fact that it's Hitman, or it's just a component of the game that you really like? Well, I think that the, what this project has meant so much for me on a personal level because I've worked with it for so long that there is really hard to pinpoint one single aspect. I mean, there is, a, from a production point of view, talking with the, my, my team members and seeing how they can create interesting uh, scenarios and characters and worlds for the level designers to use. It's, it's, it's a huge, it's very rewarding uh, process. Uh, I personally uh, love all the NPCs that are in this level, uh, in this uh, game, uh, there's something about them that makes uh, the world of Hebrew Absolution feel like a real, living, breathing world. Yeah. And uh, I really spend a lot of time trying to tweak them as much as possible, so that they, uh, even though they're just window dressing to a certain degree, uh, are just lovable, and uh, the player would also have a really hard time uh, shooting them. If he's so inclined. Yeah. If, if you feel that way. Uh, Roberto, thank you very much for this. Uh, you've been a great help. Hope you enjoy E3. Thank you very much.